much. Coach, with everything, um, I know you've, lo you've lost, um, obviously, Silvio, Doak, LeGerald, and, and Marcus. At, at any point in the season, do you even privately just kind of throw your hands up in the air and say, what next, or you just keep moving no, ahead? No, no, we'll keep moving ahead. I, uh, you know, I'd be lying if I said that you know, frustration doesn't set in, but, but, uh, but it, it didn't do any good to, to uh, get hung up on that because that didn't help you moving forward. So, um, you know, Marcus will be out tomorrow. So, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to be down, but, but uh, at least some men, but we still got good players. These guys were recruited to Kansas to play. Please they step up and play better than what we have been playing. At least, at least uh, what we have, what we played on, uh, on Tuesday. Is, is Marcus close? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, we were we were pretty encouraged yesterday, and then today he took a, he didn't take a step backwards, but but very sore. So he he'll be he probably won't do much of, if anything today except just rehab, and, and so that obviously would put him out for tomorrow. But, you know, we're hopeful maybe he can practice Sunday, maybe Monday. But the reality of it is we're probably looking at, at next Saturday, best case scenario. Last week was a really difficult day, and, and you responded. Your team responded very well on Saturday. Do you expect that tomorrow? And is it kind of a – I mean, nothing's the same, but, but similar that, that you do have some, some things going on. Uh, yeah, but the things that are – I mean, to, to be honest with you, uh, last uh, Saturday was a, was a bigger blow, you know, uh, uh, to, just from you know the build up, the build up, the build up, and, and, and then certainly uh, uh, you know this situation with with uh, with Legero did not come as a as a, a shock to me. I know he didn't deal with some stuff, and so so for me personally, even though you know it's, it's a, it was obviously instant with everybody on the outside, you know, it wasn't necessarily instant. What did your an A, your an E from Oklahoma State? What did he do well against TCU? Well, he, you know, obviously he's uh, uh, playing beyond his years. Uh, I think that, I think I think the entire team in the TCU game uh, really showed a lot of poise to get behind and, and then to fight back and, and then of course to tie the game there there at the end. But instead of you know speaking specifically, I, I, I thought that their entire team, you know, they they, they obviously had the big they play through. They, they, they obviously have a point guard that's that's really uh, uh, you know understanding Big 12 play and, and playing at a pretty high level. And then what they do better than anything though is they shoot the three, and, and uh, they do that probably as well as anybody in our league, including McGriff, who's who's shooting the, the percentage. So. Uh, I like their team. They're they're they're, they're young and and, uh, and certainly they're not beat up, you know. But they're depleted. Uh, so our teams are pretty similar. Maybe Mike and I should get together and just have officials stay on one end and play three on three. At least that way we'll have enough guys to have a sub for. Charlie Moore, what can he do for you besides making shots that can help you? Uh, you know, he's he 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 can, uh, you know, he can create havoc, create pace defensively. You know those sorts of things, uh, um, but but re the reality of it is, he's more of a scorer than he is a, a, a point guard or, or or initiator. So he needs to be able to score the ball when he's in the game to, to have you know his, his max effectiveness for us. And, and uh, you know even though he you know I thought I thought against K State you know he made two shots, but, but you, know, you look at it and he had I think three turnovers and, and, and made two shots and. I told him how happy I was that he made the shots, but we got to tighten up the unforced errors, and not just with him, but with everybody. You know what you do rotation-wise with, 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 with starters. Out still with uh, I haven't really decided. I'll wait for practice a day, sure. but we're going to obviously play big, uh, different than, than what we have been playing. You know, we, we have to. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so, but I also think it gives us the best chance. And I know there's no timetable for the return. How, how do you navigate the next couple of few weeks? With Legero? Yeah, as far nah, as no, we're, we're moving on. Like, like uh, we're not going to, you know, have him obviously. Okay. But, but the reality of it is, there's a, there's a great chance that he just needs to take care of some business. And, and so, uh, but I don't think you, I don't think we approach it uh, like we did Doke in December, uh, where you, you know, every week you, you try to prepare that he's going to be back that week. I don't, I don't think you do that. Not this time of year. So. Uh, you know, we, we think we'll get Legero back, and 
and uh, we don't know the time frame, but I, I, it, it is, it's not going to be tomorrow by, by any stretch, and so, or, or Monday, you know, or, or, or probably soon after that. So, so uh, we, we need to make sure that, that uh, uh, we support him, but on the flip side, coach the guys that we got. And if he is able to return, he's just easy to plug in because of his experience and all that? Yeah. yeah uh, easier? I, 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 easier. Okay. Easier. I don't know that easy would be the – I don't think you take somebody away from your team for however long it's going to be, and then all of a sudden you plug them in and it's like that. Right. Because, you know, hopefully we'll have some other guys develop and, and play at a high level that, that, that maybe roles will be a little different by then. I don't, I don't know. When you, in your career, when you sense that basketball has become tedious – to your players, how do you help them recapture the joy? Well, I, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, it happens with every team, and uh, you know, I, I think that, I think that's kind of an unfair question because we're, we're stating it right after losses, and that's when everything is magnified. Whether it be, uh, uh, you know, positively it can be magnified if you win, and negatively it can be magnified if you don't, and. 50% of the teams that play each and every night lose. So, so the, 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 the whole thing is, is, is you cannot let uh, 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 things become uh, situations because of uh, a disappointment in a short-term deal. Is it hard to get players to understand that and do that? Absolutely. We haven't experienced that a ton around here. But, but, but it, it, is, it is a situation where all teams go through something. They all go through something. Uh, you know, it's, it's not right to talk about the league race because right now we're not even in the league race, uh, at least the way I see it, until we start, you know, doing some things to, to create some, some uh, positive energy and wins moving forward because there's so little margin for error. But the reality, we've been behind before. God dang, we've been behind with a couple of, uh, I don't know if we've ever been behind two games, but we've been high, behind a game with four left or whatever and win the league by two games. I mean, so there's a lot to, a lot to play for. The thing about it is that, 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 that I don't think that people understand on the outside. We're not the same team we were in preseason one in the country. I mean, we're not. I mean, we, we got four of our top seven players, most talented players, that aren't going to be in uniform tomorrow. Uh, uh, so, so naturally, that's not the same team. So do we temper expectations? You know, I'm not sure I buy into that. But we also got to be a little bit realistic knowing that uh, – you know, it's it's when, when when you have less margin for error, obviously there's a greater chance that something negative could happen, such as not winning a game. And so, uh, but we're not going to make excuses to that. But that's the reality of it. Is. So you can't approach the next day like it's into the earth because there was a pretty good chance that could have happened anyway. Uh, uh, now, if we had, you know, the the, the uh, Celtics personnel, and we go on the road and. You know, we go one and five on the road, and I can understand, but, but we don't have that right now. And, and uh, certainly, you can't hold the players accountable to to a level that, uh, when the other team tries just as hard, and they have all their pieces, and they're already just as good, uh, something bad could potentially happen. So, so you know, in order to win games that are against good teams, you got to play on that particular night at that particular moment and win that particular possession. And we just haven't been doing that near enough.